It's a tool that North Carolina has an abundance of that can detect harmful pollutants. We're talking about the pine tree, and it may just be the cheapest and the simplest way to find out just what you're breathing. When it was discovered that the Camores facility in Cumberland County was releasing PFAS or forever chemicals in the soil, water, and air, scientists started measuring and monitoring just how much. They still do. In some parts of the world, certain trees and flora are used to measure other types of pollutants. So we tried to see if we could use that same idea and just expand it to cover all these new PFAS that we're seeing in North Carolina. So NC State scientists, including Kaylee Kirkwood and Aaron Baker, turned to the state tree, the pine. Would its needles relay similar results that other testing near Comores did? All of a sudden she's like, I'm seeing PFAS, which we're like, oh, that's good and bad because that means that there's contamination here, but also that means that our analytical technique is working. So why the pine needle? Well, if you've ever held them in your fingers or rubbed them, you know how sticky they are. Well, that is the key. And so um, it's just capturing the chemicals and kind of holding on to them over time. And it really seems like they're pretty stable in that wax since we were able to see those PFAS all the way from the 1960s. Yes, the 1960s. The team pulled stored pine needles that are half a century old. In all that time, they retained the pollutants they were exposed to when they were still alive. PFAS, like one known as Gen X, have been used to make nonstick cookware. In 2019, Kimors installed a thermal oxidizer facility to help control emissions. Traditional testing has shown it is helping, and the pine needle test show the same thing. Aside from its accuracy, pine needles are free, leading to far cheaper testing. The other thing with the other equipment is they might miss big contamination events because you might have an event then have to run your equipment out there really quickly to sample where our trees are always there. Wow, that is really interesting. I never would have thought pine needles. I, I wouldn't either. Yeah. It's incredible. It's sort of like, you know, a history book. It's right. just holding all those pages waiting to be open, right? One of those 1960s, she said? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Incredible. I, I, I can't wait to see how much more they do on this yeah. and how they can expand it for other things, too. Right. Russ, cool story. Yeah. Thanks. Well, it is being called the most significant environmental pact since the Paris Climate Accord. The UN, the UN Environment Assembly agreed to create a legally binding treaty to end plastic pollution by 2024. A committee will hold a series of meetings over the next two years to settle on an agreement that will put limits on the life cycle of plastics from when and how they are made to how they're thrown away or recycled. It really was a landmark decision to have all of the countries of the world decide that they want to have a plastic treaty. Every year, 11 million tons of plastic waste end up in the oceans, threatening wildlife and littering beaches. Well, if you love sea turtles, there's a place where you can see them right along our coast. Yeah, the Karen Beasley Sea Turtle Rescue and Rehabilitation Center in Surf City started tours again today. The center is currently rehabilitating 29 turtles. The center will be open every Friday and Saturday this month. You know, and I worked on the coast. I had a chance to see a lot of turtle yeah, releases me too, there. Yeah, we worked in the same yeah, place. Yeah, a lot of fun to see them. It's amazing. It is. Yeah. They do such great work. There. They do. They do. 